Hello friends. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the first TDS equation. Uh, among the students, these TDS equations, there are actually three TDS equations and they are jokingly known as TDS equations. Or, however, uh, these equations are not at all TDS. These are pretty, pretty simple equations to derive and uh, its applications are also very interesting one. Uh, in the present video, I'm going to discuss about uh, the first TDS equation and its application again. So entropy as being a state function, being a state function can be represented as a function of two variables out of these three uh, at one time. Like uh, uh, S can be considered as a f of a pure substance, can be thought of as a function of P and V, can be thought of as a function of V and T, and can be thought of as a function of P and T, okay, for a pure substance. Right. So suppose the impurity is not there, so we are talking about the pure substance. Entropy of a pure substance can be really uh, considered as a function of two variables out of these three uh, variables P, V, T at one time. So the three famous TDS equation basically are the equation that we reach to uh, when we take the entropy uh, of the given substance given as one of these three equations, like we start, from, for example, as is a function of uh, V and T, then P and T, and then P and V. So we reach to three different equations with these three different starting points. So let me discuss the in this present video the um, first TDS equation and the uh, second and third TDS equation I will be discussing in the subsequent videos. So let's start with the first TDS equation. Okay, so uh, these parameters P, V, and T have their usual meaning here, like P is the pressure, V is the volume, T is the temperature, and S is the entropy. Okay, so let's uh, suppose uh, we are considering the case when the entropy can be written as a function of V and T. So to derive the first TDS equation, we have to think that the entropy S is a function of V and T. So in that case, we can write down that dS is equal to del S over del V at constant T plus uh, dV plus del S by del T at constant V dT. I multiply this equation, let me call as one, this is two. Let me multiply the equation two by the temperature. So I get TDS is equal to T times del S by del V at constant T, dV plus T del S by del T at constant V dT. This is the equation three that we got. Okay, now um, if I look carefully, the term that we are getting here, del S by del V at constant T, this is the term that we, uh, can actually substitute from the Maxwell's relations of uh, thermodynamics. There are uh, various Maxwell's relations in uh, thermodynamics. So the value of this quantity, del S by del V at constant T can really be substituted from there. So for Maxwell's relation, we know del S by del V at constant T is equal to del P by del T at constant V and that's I'm putting as equation four over here. And moreover, if you look at the left hand side, and if I uh, write down the second law of thermodynamics, so that's nothing but dq equal to TDS. Okay. So if I substitute the following, uh, if I substitute the these information, equation four and five in three, so put four and five in three. So what we are going to get is dq is equal to t times del p by del t at constant v dv plus t del s over del t at constant v dt. Okay, now this is the equation six, suppose that we get. Now from first law of thermodynamics, We know that uh, D, 
Q is equal to DU plus DW, where DW is PDV. So at constant volume, you see P, uh, this PDV becomes zero. So in that case, DQ is equal to DU is equal to TDS, right? Because DQ is equal to TDS from second law of thermodynamics. And we also know that the DU is nothing but mu CV DT. Okay, where CV is the molar specific heat. Generally written with the small c. But if I combine mu times CV, I can write down the capital CV. Okay, uh, this capital CV is actually mu times small CV. So DT is equal to DU. So if I substitute these relations, like say equation eight, uh, and seven, and I can write down from seven and eight, I can actually write down that DDS is equal to CVDT, which means CV is equal to TDS over DT at constant volume. Equation number nine, let's say. Okay, now if I substitute equation nine, in my equation six, I put the value of CV, which is nothing but del T del S by del T at constant V, right? And uh, if I put the value of CV over here at D equal, equal to TDS in the equation six, so basically I'm putting the value of equation seven and nine in six. So from equation six, seven, and nine, I'm going to get TDS is equal to DV plus CV DT. So that is known as first TDS equation. So we have reached the first TDS equation. So you see, uh, its derivation was pretty simple. Now uh, let's look at the example uh, where this TDS equation can be useful. For example, let's you consider uh, uh, one mole of an, uh, suppose one mole of a wonderful gas undergoes a reversible isothermal expansion from an initial volume, let's some V1 to V2. Then how much is the heat that is being transferred in this process? So let's say if one mole of wonderful gas equation undergoes a reversible isothermal expansion from an initial volume v1 to v2 okay how much heat is transferred in this process and the solution of this kind of a problem can be thought of uh, with the application of this TDS equation itself. Like what's the uh, TDS equation? If I uh, write down the TDS equation for one mole, so for let's say uh, uh, I number this TDS equation as equation 10 because uh, so from if I write down uh, equation 10 for one mole of one double gas, so for one mole, see my capital CV is equal to one times small CV, right? It means CV itself. So this uh, this capital CV become uh, molar specific heat. Okay. So for one mole, I can write down equation ten for one mole gas. Equation ten can be written as uh, G. DS, so this S is small s, but the, the earlier S that I used in the TDS equation, this uh, that I'm marking with the marker, uh, this one, 
this is here is capital S, right? Because that was used for mu moles, mu number of moles, right? Here now it is for one mole. So it's, these all are molar quantities now. This entropy and the uh, specific heat uh, that we are talking about and the volume itself. All these are will be the molar quantities. For example, the volume will be the volume of one mole. And the entropy will be of entropy of one mole of gas, and the uh, for specific heat is for one mole of specific gas. Uh, yeah. So T D S equal to C V um, G T plus T times D P del P del T at constant V D is okay. This equation number eleven. Now I'm going to calculate the uh, required heat transfer. Now we know that for the one mole of van der Waal gas, what's the van der Waal gas equation for one mole of gas? So that's P plus A by V square into V minus V equal to RT. Therefore, one mole of van der Waal gas. Okay, so from this particular equation, I can calculate this quantity, which is there in the uh, TDS equation, del, del P by del T at constant V. So I can really calculate that okay. pressure dependence, which is RT upon V minus B here. This small V is the volume, molar volume here, A upon V square. Okay, so this is V minus B. Okay, so now if I calculate del P over del T at constant V, so R upon V minus V time, uh, I'm going to get del P by del T, that's one. So that's the uh, value that we get for this particular quantity. So if I put the value of this quantity back to this equation 11, so I'm going to get TDS is equal to a CVDT plus del P by del T at constant V times T, that is T times R upon V minus V times uh, dV. Okay, so this small v I have used for the one uh, volume for the one mole. It's a smaller volume. Okay, now in the question you see uh, they have asked us to calculate the heat involved in the reversible isothermal expansion. Right, it means the temperature is not changing. So when temperature is not changing, so this uh, dt here is zero. This term is zero for isothermal. Okay, for isothermal process. That is going to be zero. So I'm going to get plus T into R upon V minus V dV is equal to T times dS. So T. Okay, so from here I can write down that my TDS, which is nothing but the heat involved in this process, right? DQ is equal to T times R upon dV over V minus V. So if I calculate, if I integrate this equation, I'm going to get Q equal to, since it's isothermal process, so RT. Will be treated as constant, that is the universal gas constant anyway, and T is constant in the isothermal process. So I've integrated dV upon V minus V from V1 to V2. Okay, volume V and 2 is a smaller volume V1 to V2. So what I'm going to get RT ln V2 minus B upon V1 minus B. So that's the amount of heat uh, that is going to be involved in this, uh, this kind of process in the isothermal reversible expansion of the uh, one mole of one mole gas. So this much is the heat involved in this kind of process. Okay, so that's uh, all for now and I will be discussing more about the other TDS equation in my subsequent video. Thank you so much.